the Thoughty or Tea podcast. I think it would be cool to talk about the kind of like the red flags. Like what what um, red flags do you find um, <laughs> in relationships <laughs> when when you just start them, and how do, how do you go about identifying those? I think yeah, I think a big red flag, like we mentioned, is when they use your autism and your differences against you. Like their attitude might change really quickly, and they will switch back to being nice with no effort if they think it will control you in a way that gets them what they want. Like they would be mean to control you to get what they want, but they would switch on the nice the moment they think you you're like threatening to leave, or they think that they're going to lose control of you. And if you leave, they lose, lose control of you. So they will switch on the charm and they will love bomb you until you're back in their arms, metaphorically or physically. And yeah, and you, but they will use that, your autism against you. So they could, <laughs> yeah, they could put you in situations of like loud noises, even though they know that you're really struggling with sensory issues. And then they might blame you for the fallout or they might invalidate it or shame you. And if you ever made a little mistake or a misunderstanding in a social situation, they will never let you forget it. It will be brought up yeah. time and time again until yeah. for eternity. <laughs> and it will just, <laughs> if you needed help mm -hmm. with something, and, you know, they're really great and they're really helpful, but, they, but they're now holding it over your head. Mm -hmm. And it's now sort of not a what's the word not a scapegoat they're using it as a reason to coerce you into something else like i did this really yeah. helpful thing for you you should do this for me and that's not how consent works and it's also not very respectful of boundaries so that's a big red flag too i'd say that if i could add something that perhaps um you know, kind of one of the big red flags that, that has come up with any relationships, relationships that I've had that haven't been too good is that they kind of give give an air of of understanding about what autism is and and what you experience without actually knowing or asking how what you're yeah. like and what what you experience. It's kind of like they feel like they've already understood the whole autism thing they don't, you don't need, need to, to ask any more. questions yeah. <laughs> and it's, it can often come across as quite like nice you're like oh hey this person understands me i don't have to make any effort to help them understand but it tends to be very like <laughs> stereotypical and it tends <laughs> to be very like um yeah, it's well. They're not. They're not necessarily listening to to who you to are you. and what you experience. They understand um, autism in general, but they're not making any any effort to understand you as an individual, and that is also a red flag. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um, but even 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 just in general, I think, you know, if they're working like social care, if they're like a teacher, or um. They work with uh, with charity or they work for parents and and they kind of they feel like they've got it all sussed out and they just that they just don't have that kind of natural curiosity um in who you are i think that's that's definitely a red flag because you you are at risk of kind of being stereotyped by them i think also a red flag could be when they sort of they put you on a pedestal and they think you're mm. so wonderful and you're perfect in every way and there can't be any conflicts, there can't be any, you know, they've rushed you off your feet and it's a world with robots and everything's perfect and we should get married next week and all of that silly stuff. <laughs> but it's, um, you know, I think that's a red flag because, well, there's many reasons actually. If you're put on a pedestal, very much similar to what you were just saying, they have an idea of you. And they're not willing to change it yeah. in favor yeah. of what their ego needs and what their wounded inner child needs from their past. They need to believe that you are the perfect person because they can't handle it if you're not. And that means that they're not actually listening to you. They're not understanding you. They're not, mm. they're not willing to admit that anything is wrong. And that also means that there's no conflict either. And I know that sounds strange, but 
every healthy relationship has conflict. There's always arguments. The difference is how we learn how to healthily argue <laughs> and communicate yeah. in a healthy way. So like if you're pretending there's no issues and that person's on a pedestal, you're just sweeping everything under the rug, you're, mm. you're not listening to their needs it's not it's not particularly healthy and sometimes yeah. it's a defense mode like we're so traumatized maybe from past experiences that we don't want to be hurt and we avoid the conflict i mean it makes sense it's understandable and, and some of these red flags can even be just shameless like some people have red flags because they don't they haven't been taught how to handle their their emotions and their trauma and communicate in a healthy way. And that's not necessarily their f fault. So I think there's red flags for unhealthy relationships, but there's also toxic, <laughs> toxic red flags. So this one has hope, the red flags where people actively, yeah. they want to try and improve. They want, and they're, they're aware that there's a learning journey and they need to try and listen and communicate and health, healthily learn how to improve. But this one, it's all about the intention. This one, the yeah. toxic traits, they have no intention of improving. They are literally just there to manipulate you and control you mm -hmm. and to feeding their own ego so they can feel better about themselves. And I think it's really important to establish which one is which. <laughs> hmm. I, I kind of feel like, to, to a certain degree, saying that autistic people are like perfect and these kind of angelic benevolent benevolent creatures like <laughs> um <laughs> i think i think i think to some degree like i i understand that it's like a reactionary kind of approach to the ideas that that people have put up put out in the past about us being un unempathic and being you know perhaps not understanding in social situations and stuff but it still is to a certain degree infantilizing um and as you said, you know, if people have this kind of pedestalized idea about what you're like and they don't really, I guess, take on board what you what you say or aspects to your personality that are, are true to you, um, then at some point they're going to become like, or how would you say, um, annoyed at you that you don't meet this this pedestalized it's, expectation it's impossible like, to realistically meet it no matter what you yeah. do because it's yeah. not real <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah but also i think what you said about sort of the pedestal thing a lot of people put autistic people on a pedestal in terms of like our savant abilities or whatever uh, yeah. and i think <laughs> and i think that's got plays a part in it too because for so long, autistic people were treated really badly. <laughs> mm. Hey up, YouTube. Hope you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far. If you want to check out the full episode, you can find it here on my YouTube channel under the podcast section, or you can go to Spotify, Apple, Google to check it out on different podcasting streaming services. If you have enjoyed this video this far, please make sure to like, Perhaps drop me a subscribe if you want to see some more content from me and drop a comment down below, even if it's something simple like an emoji or a, or a heart. Uh, it really does help satisfy those big YouTube algorithm gods in the sky. Anyway, I'll let you go back to it. And, you know, we were dehumanized and we were invalidated. We were seen as worthless and barely even human. And that's yeah. horrific, horrific. And advocates like us in the past would be like, hey, autistic people are just like you, but they have gifts and they have quirks and they're servants and they have all of these wonderful good things about them. So humanize them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're real, they're human. And I think that has held on to a lot of people today. Like they, and it's not their faults, it's just what society has taught them. But like, people also put autistic people on a pedestal. Like, if they're not that servant, they're not real and they're not worthy of respect. And I think that's partly, oh, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, sorry. <laughs> um, but it's partly why I see my disability as a gift. Like I'm autistic, but I don't have any of these seven abilities. I'm not the person that <laughs> autistic advocates of the past would point to and be mm. like, hey, this is, yeah. you know, I was diagnosed at two, like I didn't learn to speak until I was eight and all of this other stuff. Like I'm 
definitely autistic and my disability impacts me so severely like I can't always walk or talk and you know all these things so then while that's really hard that's the raw reality it doesn't take away my humanity and it doesn't take away my quirks it doesn't take away my me being a worthwhile like a worthy person of good things and I think we need to remove that pedestal because of that because we can still be like there's no reason aside from ableism why in my eyes, why autism can't also be a disability and a gift. Yeah. And I think people, in order to learn to understand autism and autistic people better, especially in romantic relationships or at school, we do need to learn to understand those hidden depths and those hardships to be like, to humanize us and validate every part of what makes us tick so that we can be like, yes, we understand how to help them without unintentionally mm-hmm. gaslighting them. And yeah bit of a tangent i think the train sort of went <laughs> whoa <laughs> sorry it's all right <laughs> don't know if that was relevant i think the, <laughs> i think um also a big big red flag is um probably aspects around expectations because um if someone does something for you and then they expect you to be sort of amenable to what they want you to do or they expect you to repay the favor like every single time um you know that i feel like that's the red flag because in in you know life and in relationships you know as you were talking about um having 16 of the 106 life skills or something i can't remember <laughs> um like there's going to be undoubtedly some things that my partner will have to do in order to help help me with with my need, what my needs are and i can i can help in in different other situations but i think when people have done things and then expected a specific way of behaving around them or a specific outcome that it's become difficult Mm. um in that sense like it's almost like expected of me like i help you with this stuff so you do what i say or you do these things um you help me with this you know and not necessarily something that comes from me it's very manipulative and it's also, yeah, it pushes the boundaries, doesn't it? It sort of coerces mm. your consent because that expectation is that you've got to do the thing that they're asking you of you to mm. do because they were like, oh, like I was so helpful and they use it against you. And that can, that sort of thing, it can also like drive a wedge between like actual healthy members, <laughs> good people mm. in, that you know, like it can drive a wedge because they can see this, these red flags and they try to communicate it with you and I suppose another red flag is that the person who's toxic will try to drive that wedge and they will make it bigger between you and the healthy people they will try to cut you off from your support network and gaslight you so that you believe that they're right the toxic person's right and the healthy people who are trying to help you like genuinely trying to help you they're wrong and they don't understand you and only only the toxic person understands you and that wedge gets even bigger Mm. and especially when it's so obvious that all these red flags are happening and they're trying to help you the wedge it's like a little ocean you can't jump and swim back yeah (laughs) definitely no i understand that i think it's something that i've experienced as well um you know i i would i'd say that perhaps another aspect to it is if um the person is very overwilling almost to a point which it's crossing your boundaries yeah. to um help you with life and things like you know perhaps coming around and supporting you when you haven't asked it or doing certain things for you when you when you haven't asked them to and you know like over over time sort of diminishing your ability to look after yourself because of you know they've filled in certain aspects to to your life and independent living that you yeah. feel okay with managing yourself but um they've kind of taken over everything and you know there's that kind of element of control on their part and if you if you say that it's not something that you want 
and something that it makes you feel bad and you you actually really want to do it yourself it's like oh well i've been helping you out that's a bit ungrateful and you know <laughs> relating a lot sorry <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> there's a certain amount of it's not quite but nearly learned helplessness because they are doing everything for you all the time like they and they're controlling yeah. all the aspects that you think you could probably do but they're like nah like i'm going to yeah. do it all for you and I guess they do and it. It's, partly, it's something that you didn't want them to do. Yes. They then tell you oh. to do something that you don't want to do. Yeah. It's really weird. Mm. And you kind of just go with it because it's just, you know, like, well, you, I guess they did help me with this certain thing. I probably should do that. Do I want to? No. Did I want them to help me in the first place? No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> and it I'm seems, okay. It I can seems, do that. <laughs> it seems very innocent. And that's the problem with red flags because a lot of it can seem really innocent. And I suppose it's then delving into the psychological sort of the intention behind their behaviours and mm. sort of understanding that actions speak louder than words, like apologising well, and that's saying, hard, isn't it? oh, it's so oh. difficult. <laughs> but yeah, like someone Especially saying when you're a direct it, communicator, oh. just, uh... <laughs> it breaks your heart, doesn't it? Just it to does. realize that people are lying to you. It's like straight to your face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yay. Autism. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think there's there's anything else. Um I think I think those those are definitely the, the ones that I would put forward. Because I, I know you can you can think of like any, we can think of loads and loads of different things that are probably not good ideas in relationships and, you know, probably could be considered not a positive sign, but I think just by the nature of how relationships are, it can always be very difficult to give those kind of definitive it's ideas or so things. It's so complicated. Because <laughs> mm. working out the intentions behind all of these little things, like it's a constant guessing game, isn't it? Like it's, and it takes so long to process. Um, well, life's very complicated in itself. Sometimes I'm overwhelmed with like a million things going on. Like, I don't know, my disability or my illness or like work or like, just like with everyone, like there's so much going on, like the processing of healthy relationships and what's actually going on. It Sometimes it goes on the back burner because you're just trying to survive the day, <laughs> which is trying to get yeah. through all of the stress and the strain of general adult living because being an adult is difficult. <laughs> yeah. It's mm. never ending. Sure. And like, honestly, I wouldn't change it, but Maybe that's part of it too, because like, if you feel like you want to change your partner, maybe that's a red flag too, in the sense that maybe they're not treating you right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, I do. Yeah. Like, like get them to understand you better mm. or to take you seriously. I think that could be something. Um, I think I think a lot of the things that we said that I think they're very applicable to kind of the. <laughs> the like of the autistic experience of these red flags because <laughs> i feel you now as i said we could talk about a lot of the different red flags <laughs> and situations like you know someone who just lets you monologue and lets you tell them all of your intimate details about your life and then doesn't provide any of theirs or <laughs> you know doesn't put a boundary and say like you know it's, this is not you know t this is too much for me or mm. you know 